with a body striped to provide perfect camouflage. A fishing cat appears along the river. love to swim and dive underwater and wear a layer of short hair so dense that water cannot get through. It is this layer that will keep them warm and dry even in chilly waters. Fishing cats are rapidly disappearing due to habitat loss and poaching. They deserve our protection before these quiet hunters disappear. Fine. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of the night hunters. Now, I've often been asked, how do nocturnal animals survive? Well, all night creatures have unique adaptations for survival in the forest. For example, the bitterong. Now, folks, your attention over to the right hand side of the stage, just up here. These animals, take note, they are jet black in color. Very difficult to see at night, so give me a shout once you see him. Now this animal, there you go, right on time, ladies and gentlemen. This is our Bintrong, his name is Aslan, very, very adorable indeed. Now like I said, they are jet black in color, almost invisible at night, and with the excellent eyesight and quiet ways of moving through the dense forest of Asia, they are able to pounce on small animals easily. Now birds' eggs happen to be their favorite food, and they also feed on fish fruits and small mammals. Isn't he a handsome boy? Look at him there. Now, these big trucks have unique adaptations. He's about to show us one right now, and that would be that long, powerful, prehensile tail, which enables them to climb on trees and hang from branches just like that. Now, can you imagine that this tail is incredibly strong? It is able to withstand the entire body weight which in Aslan's case over here is about 15 kilograms, so quite a lot indeed. Now if you were to walk around the night safari tonight and you come across the Bintrong exhibit, you might pick up on a rather peculiar scent. Some people like it as smell to that of butter popcorn, other people think it smells a little bit more like the pandan leaf. Now these animals are omnivores, which means they will eat meat, like mammals and other kinds of animals, as well as fruit. So right now, Aslan is eating a little bit of his favorite food, which happens to be a bit of banana. And as he makes his way back along that branch, take a look at the way that he walks. They're also known as the Asian bear cat due to their short, stubby legs and bear-like walk. Thank you very much, Aslan. Bye-bye. Such a cute pie. Now, you might be wondering where his name Aslan comes from. Well, for those of you that read the Chronicles of Narnia, you might realize that he's named after the lion, the character in the movie, whereas his sister is called Narnia. All right, thank you very much, Aslan. Bye-bye. He's taking his time, that's all right. Okay, we're gonna put this back. Now, while civets, like the Bintrong, rely on their sorry, acute sense of hearing, other nocturnal animals rely on their keen sense of smell, as well as hearing. That would be the owls. Now, coming down from the right-hand side, we have Liana along with Oscar. Oscar is the Eurasian eagle owl one of the largest species of owls in the world. As the name suggests, they can be found in Europe as well as some parts of Asia. Now that's not it. Some of you might be able to hear a little bit of noise. Let's go check it out. Over on my left hand side, coming down with Akil, we have Midnight. Midnight is a Malay fish owl, also known as a Bahi fish owl. They can be found in Southeast Asia, such as Indonesia, Malaysia, and guess what? Even here in Singapore. Now, it has been said, that owls are one of the quietest raptors in the world when it comes to their flight. Who agrees me? Who agrees that owls are really quiet when they fly? Let's see those hands. A lot of children with their hands up. Good job, good job. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to demonstrate this really silent flight. But what we need you to do is to please remain in your seats. Keep your flashes switched off. Keep really quiet. And most importantly, focus your attention over to midnight. Whenever you're ready, midnight. There you go. Now, apart from the screeching, you would have heard no other sound. They have really...
really soft feathers and this gives them the name the silent hunters of the night. Now the reason why they need to be so quiet when they fly is because in the wild, can anyone shout out and tell me what do owls eat? What do they hunt for? Rats. Rats? Okay, anything else from rats? Snakes? Yes, some owls will hunt for snakes. Fish? Yes, Malay fish owls for example, is an insect, right? They'll hunt for fish. Insects, smaller owls will go and eat insects, you are absolutely correct. But the majority of what owls eat would be rodents. Now rodents would consist of things like rats and mice. Rats and mice and other rodents have a very acute sense of hearing, meaning that they can hear things really well. So in order for these owls to fly down and catch their prey, they need to be really quiet when doing so. All right, now another fun fact about Malay fish owls would be that even though, like I said, they're Malay fish owls, they will hunt for fish, right? But they hate to get wet. So what they would do is swoop down to the surface of the water, they'll catch that fish, and then they will fly off to somewhere that's a little bit dry to finish off their meal. Now, for midnight over here, she was hatched in the Jurong Bird Park and was sent to us after that. She's been with us ever since. Fantastic flight back to Akil over here. Let's give it up for Midnight the Malay Fish Owl along with Akil. Thank you so much. All right, now we have not forgotten about the lovely Oscar and Liana over here. Oscar's going to show us something rather unique that owls are able to do, all right? So I'm going to get this perch over here. Now, Liana over here, she's pretty small size, right? But she's really strong. But we're not going to ask her to hold on to Oscar for the entire segment because guess what? Oscar is about 2.1 kilograms. So we're going to give Liana a little bit of a break. And while Oscar is getting very comfortable up in that perch, I'm going to ask you all a very quick question. It is very well known that owls are able to rotate their heads quite a bit, right? That's common knowledge. But can anyone tell me by how many degrees? 360, we've got 270. Anything else? 270. All right, this side, you're really quiet. What's going on? What do you think? How many degrees can an owl rotate their head? 625. Let me tell you, if this owl was to turn its head 625 degrees, I would be the first one up and out of here, right? That is not normal, okay? Now, the correct answer would be 270 degrees. So good job to those of you that got it. 270 degrees is three quarters of a circle, and the reason why they can move their heads so much is because unlike you and I, they can't move their eyes left to right or up and down. So they have to be able to rotate their heads to take a look around their surroundings. And you know what, at this point in time, I'm going to let us also show you exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Take it away, Oscar. Look at that. Now, in case that was a little bit too quick, we're going to try that one more time. Very impressive and just a little bit freaky. Now, the reason why they have the ability to do this is because they have twice the number of neck vertebrae that you and I have. We humans, we have seven, but for owls, they have a very impressive 14. Another very impressive thing about, there you go, just about to mention that wingspan, Eurasian eagle owls have a wingspan of up to six feet long. Now, when it's fully stretched, it's six feet. To give you some comparison, I am 5'3", so you can imagine they can stretch it even, even further than that. All right, fantastic job. Let's give it up for Liana along with Oscar, the Eurasian Eagle Owl. Now, I'm going to get this perch out of the way because our next segment does not involve a bird. But I'm not going to tell you what it does involve, all right? I'll give you some clues to try and guess, okay? So I'll give you three clues. First clue, this animal is really small. Okay, could be anything, right? Could be a mouse, could be a hamster. Second clue, this animal is native to the Sahara Desert. Third clue, this animal has really big ears. It could be a fennec fox, it could be a fennec fox. I also think you've been to this show before, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get off of the stage and my very good friend, Foxtrot, is gonna come out and meet us. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Foxtrot! Along with Pavitra! Now, as you can see, he is a fennec fox, so good job! Fennec foxes are able to leap up into the air as well as leap forward 1 to 1.2 meters in length. They are native to the Sahara Desert, and right now, Foxtrot is going to show us that lovely jump. Look at that, very nice indeed. Apart from that, they have very sharp and curved claws. This enables them to dig around in the desert sand. Looking for things like small insects, small mammals, and even arachnids, like scorpions. 
Every woman they told me that they have freed me here as well. Take a look. These years have come to this now for prey as well as predators sneaking up behind them and helps them to get rid of any excess heat out there in the desert. All right, and off they go back home. Let's give it out for Foxtrot, the Fetty Fox, along with Pogitra, the human.